rolling, rolling, rolling. Greatest of all time. This is Monday, March 4th. All right, everybody. Welcome to BO Boys for Monday, March 4th. Fuck it. It's a raw feed. We're doing it live. I'm Clayton. Yeah, I'm Pat. Clayton, huge show. We got the biggest movie opening of the year so far to talk about. And before we plow, before we go visit the dunes, Clayton, I think it's time we make a special announcement about what's coming up this year. Uh, yeah. We got it. We yeah. got it. All right. So um, people have been asking for it. People, you know, they've been watching the YouTube. They see us there, but they want to see us more up close and personal. And we're going to give it to them, Clayton, because this fall, the B.O. Boys are going on tour. It's happening. And right now it looks like you know, we're going to be visiting the major markets, the major domestic markets. We're not quite ready to hit London, Paris, Beijing yet, though I'm sure those dates will be coming down the line. But this fall, we're hitting some major domestic markets. New York, it's going to happen. Boston, I think, is going to happen. I think that's going to happen. But the one that right now we could officially announce is that in the City of Angels, Hollywood, California, Los Angeles... We will be doing the B.O. Boys live show on Tuesday night, October 8th. That is happening in Los Angeles, in East Hollywood, at the Yard Theater. Tickets are not on sale yet. So, you know, put your credit cards away. Put them away. But soon we will be telling you to take your credit cards out. But right now what you could do is you could mark your calendar. If you live in L.A., live in California, hell, if you live anywhere, Mm-hmm. I would say, yeah, Pat, west planes of the exist. Mississippi. Planes exist. People could fly in. So even our London fans, the Parisian on the bicycle who who came over to me, get yourself to Los Angeles, Tuesday, October 8th. We're going to be there. We're going to have special guests. People are, are already signing up. And you could guess who it is. They think, you know, we will be paying tribute to our tribal chief live on stage in Los Angeles. We'll be throwing our ones up in person. So it's going to be a gigantic show. It's the open. It's going to be the opening weekend of Joker Two, the 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 Joker musical with Lady Gaga. So we're going to have a lot to talk about in person, on stage, Los Angeles, and like I said, New York, Boston. Those that are coming, and listen, if you want us to come to your city, send an email to the Bo Boys Podcast at gmail dot com. Let us know what your pitch is. You know, this is like the Super Bowl. This is like a WrestleMania. Cities could bid on getting the B.O. boys in town. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're the one to get the ball rolling and you get your mayor involved. You get your governor involved. Get the PowerPoint together. Give us an offer and maybe we'll come to your city this fall. But Mm -hmm. Los Angeles is happening in October. More info to come. But mark your calendar. Get your plane tickets. We're going on tour, Clayton. Big, big news. Big news. Are you excited? Are you excited for the for the world tour? Will you bring the shades? Will you wear the shades on on stage and let the people see what it's like on screen, but in person? Oh, of course. You got to wear the shades. He's bringing the shades. All right, Clayton. We're gonna plow in person at these live events, but let's let's do a good old fashioned virtual podcast plow right now. Uh, for the weekend of, who is this, March 1st, March 2024. F- first, number one, Dune Part 2 made $81.5 million in its first weekend. Number two, Bob Marley, One Love, made $7.4 million, down 45%. It lost 207 theaters. It's at $82.7 million in its third weekend. Number three, Ordinary Angels made $3.8 million, down 38%. No theater change. It's at $12.5 million in its second weekend. Number four, Madam Webb made $3.2 million, down 46%. It hemorrhaged 897 theaters. It's at $40.4 million in its third weekend. And number five, The Chosen, season four, episode seven to eight, made $3.1 million. They stand right now at $3.9 million in the first weekend of release. And, of course, Chosen is a Fathom event. 
So, Pat, that's the top five. And honestly, there's yep. nothing to talk about except for this Dune Part 2 opening, doing nearly twice what the original did. Mm-hmm. And when we get off mic and the Monday actuals come in, it could be even more. I, I think it will be even more. You know, this is Monday morning, so we're still going with the Sunday night estimates, which are usually pretty close. But on a movie like this, the actuals are going to be higher. They just are. But but listen, this made, what, $81 million, Maybe it made 82 maybe 83 But gigantic hit, breakout sequel. I mean, this is a breakout sequel. This is, uh, And it's tough to have a breakout sequel when the first movie did $40 million. Mm-hmm. You know, breakout sequels are usually an Austin Power situation where the first one, you know, opens like 10 million and then the second one broke out because of home video and cable reruns. Th- this is a breakout of what was already a pretty good opening weekend. Yeah. Um, it's a it's officially a cultural touchdown now, this dude movie. You know, this 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 is gigantic. Yeah, I mean, I think there's so many good things about this opening and how it happened and why it happened. And it's one of those things where, yeah, Dune was held. Dune was held from last year to this year so that the stars could promote, right? Mm -hmm. Which, you know, we were hearing that about a lot of projects. And guess what? It didn't always work. Mm -hmm. Because... Mm -hmm. The people promoting, no one gave two S hits about. Yeah. But this does show the power of stars. Mm -hmm. The exciting thing about this movie, and we've said it, but to see it, me and you saw it in Dolby on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And we sat there and we saw a parade of young and older stars Come mm-hmm. across our screen, and it was spectacular. Not yes. the effects were spectacular, don't get me wrong, but what really was spectacular was seeing all of these stars. This is the sort of movie we need. Yes, this is the sort of movie that is going to propel stars to the next level. Yes, yes, because this Dune is an IP, and yes, it's a book that. Millions and millions of people have read for, you know, 50 years or however, whenever this was published, I assume in the 70s. And obviously, this isn't an original from nothing feature, but this is not a comic book movie where people are just going to see Spidey Man and it really doesn't matter who's in the Spidey Man costume. Although, listen, Tom Holland obviously was great nose and all that, but he hasn't, he's but followed again, up with one, one hit and then an Apple show. So, ex- so yeah, but several, so Apple he didn't shows. capitalize on that several Apple shows and, and a dear guy. And I know Watson Butler's in like the, the airplane show or whatever, but please the cast of Dune, don't do Apple shows. Don't do streaming shows, do movies, but Dune is not an IP where all of these fans were just like, I get to finally see Paul Atreus on the big screen, my hero since I was a baby. And, the, you know, I have my Paul Atreus sheets. No, they wanted to see Timothy Chalamet in this big budget spectacle. You know, they wanted to see Florence Pugh and Austin Butler and uh, Anya Taylor-Joy and uh, Z- Zendaya. You know, it wasn't about the characters they played being IP that the audience was like, oh, I guess that's cool that there's this actor playing the IP, but I I just want to see Batman on the screen. You yeah. know, th- this was, they wanted to see these stars in this movie and the fact that it was a book and the fact that there's some audience relationship with this IP obviously helped, but it was about seeing this cast in what was also, I think the, important part of this being such a big hit is something that everyone went in there expect to be a great movie. You know, this being great, this getting the, you know, 90 plus percent Rotten Tomatoes and the A cinema score. That's why this was a huge hit because it was a great movie, the expectation of a great movie and then stars in this great movie. Yes. I mean, uh, listen, I think the only thing close to as fatiguing as 
you know, superhero movies as a genre is us talking about superhero movies as a genre. Yeah. But I think it's important that people people who listen to this and we're going to get a lot of newbies because this is a huge movie. This is a yeah. huge blockbuster opening. They're going to want to know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. The difference is that stretch did not create sustainable stars. It didn't. Mm -hmm. it, it, didn't. That's a it just didn't. It just it, didn't. It didn't. So for whatever reason, we did not get any stars from that era. Yeah. What's happening now that's so positive, and that's why we're so high on something like Twisters, is that, yes, all of the special effects stuff has been done. We've seen everything. Mm -hmm. So the new recipe is special effects plus star. Somebody mm -hmm. you want to see do these things. That mm -hmm. is what Dune is. Like you said, you want to see Chalamet fight in a rebellion and mm -hmm. blow up spice fields. That's what you want to see. Yeah. You don't want to just see the character do it. You want to see him do it. And right. the big thing about this, too, is that you have people going to see this in the best format possible. This number mm -hmm. would have been higher if people were okay with seeing this spectacle on a crappy screen, mm -hmm. but they weren't. Yes. They would rather wait and see it the way it's supposed to be seen on a PLF, mm -hmm. and that's why these numbers are lower than a superhero opening or even Oppenheimer. Now, there's all this talk. We'll get into this really quickly. Okay, okay. I didn't know about that. I might not no, know about No, no, the, the Oppenheimer opening... The the thing to everybody talking about how the uh, the Oppenheimer opening was better and everything, and the thing with the Oppenheimer opener is it had Barbie. It had Barbie. Yeah. So let's not. There's forget. no Dune and Heimer here, or 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 Dune B. There wasn't a Dune B this weekend. This did eighty one point five, possibly more, without piggybacking onto another cultural phenomenon, okay? Right, I right. don't want to come here and slam Nolan and slam Oppenheimer because that movie did what it did. It made a bunch of money for theatrical, and that is great. Right, but don't and he's on the eve of getting of his Oscars, so the B.O. Yeah, boys yeah. don't need to take him down right before that. Let him have his moment. But don't say, don't, don't start making an Oppenheimer comparison here because that was a lot to do with Barbie as well. Right. Right. Summer, middle of summer. I mean, yeah. yes. The fact that Dune 2 basically almost did the Oppenheimer opening really does show just how gigantic this Dune movie is. And, and I, I, I think you nailed it in that people, and this is sort of what we saw with Avatar 2, this is a movie that people are expecting a quality uh, night out at as opposed to, all right, I got to go see captain marvel or i gotta go see spidey three because i don't want to miss the spoilers and i want to know you know i want to know opening weekend what's happening and those movies people don't really care what kind of experience they're getting they just want to get it you know mm -hmm. that's more of a quick fix going to those opening weekend of the superhero movies with dune like with oppenheimer like with avatar 2 people are more discerning they want the high-end experience you know, this is filet, this is caviar, this is an expensive night out, and the superhero movies are fast food. And, you know, fast food, you go eat in your car in the parking lot because mm -hmm. you're just looking to get that hit. But with fine dining, you want the white tablecloths, you want your waiters to have gloves, you want the PLFs. And I think yes. that's, people are going to wait to get that experience. People are going to, you know, oh... I couldn't get a reservation tonight at La Cirque. I couldn't get it. So I'll wait to eat until Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I won't eat I anything, eat anything. Else. Yeah. I won't eat anything because I'm only waiting to eat at fine dining. Yes. And and that's what Dune 2 is, whereas the superhero movies are, oh, I couldn't get it. Well, you're not trying to get into La Cirque, let's be honest. But I, I, I couldn't, you know, the one drive through is really long. I'll go to the next drive through down the interstate. And I'll eat my car mm -hmm. because that's all I expect. So yeah. those are the superhero movies. Dune 2, people are going to wait until they could get the white gloves, the PLF, and they'll wait until Tuesday if they have to. And just really quick, I know we don't normally dip into the mailbag this early in the show, mm -hmm. but the, we got an email a couple days ago from wannabe-o-boy Nathan. Okay. 
He says, love the show, blah, blah, blah. Thank you, Nathan. We love you as well. The B.O. Boys has spoken and the industry has listened. 150 new IMAX screens planned for 2024. Wow. This is from an article in uh, The Economist. Mm-hmm. And it the title is Cinemas May Be Dying, But IMAX and the High End Are Thriving. And this is something that, again, we've said a lot on this show, but needs to be said almost every episode, is mm-hmm. that the myth that people don't go to the theater because it's too expensive is a myth. I even said it at the beginning of the sentence. It is yep. a myth. What they want is the best experience, the optimal yes. experience. They are willing yes. to pay for the optimal experience. And IMAX and other PLFs are that optimal experience. So that's what the future of cinema is. It's mm-hmm. higher ticket prices and a better experience. And you have to understand that that's the way it is. Yes. Yes. And and, and I think as we move out of the decade of the superhero slop era and we do start moving into this new era where hopefully movie stars are more at the center and people's expectations for quality is more important it's going to have to come hand in hand with more plfs and the theaters being able to match the audience expectations yeah. you know the the movie going audience and listen it's always going to have people who want slop we're going to want slop once in a while of course mm-hmm. you know it's it's an industry that still is going to cater to teenagers going to cater to young people who are going on a date looking for a quick you know dark place and you'll always have that but i do think the white glove service type experiences of a dune 2 are going to be more important that is what people want stars great experience leather chairs heated bottoms You know, if you could heat their little tush while they're watching Dune 2, that's what people are going to want. Absolutely. Uh, One, I will call out one thing, and this is not an issue with the movie or the opening weekend necessarily, but one thing about our experience that wasn't quite white glove this weekend, Clayton. Oh, it was white, white sock. Well, okay, there is that. So there's a, there's, there's a few things. I mean, do you want to talk about the white sock? I had another thing, but. We oh, have... it's what I mean. This guy, uh, this boorish guy, took off his shoes at the took theater shoes. next to yeah. us. You don't yeah. take off your shoes. You just don't. You just and don't. listen. I... That's not a reason not to go. That's a human no. experience. That's a story you can share with your friends. That's why you congregate in groups so you can talk about the one guy, the one absolute, just total. Uh, what would you say about this guy? Just like. Didn't care what other people thought. He he wasn't going there for white glove service. He wasn't going there. He he didn't think he was in Le Cirque. Although maybe this guy takes his shoes off in Le Cirque. He too. probably does. He, he probably, probably does. does. He's that he sort of does. guy. But uh, but that still is an experience. It's fine. I didn't smell any foot odor. Did you? I didn't either. I didn't okay. either. You know, maybe this guy. He perhaps he saw the G's Us ads during the Super Bowl where where the feet are getting washed and, and he must have been inspired and washed his feet before he went out there. Cause I think I, I didn't, I didn't smell a smell. Um, so there was that, um, but he was seeing it in Dolby with us. So, you know, he was, he was going for the white glove service. His tickets as good as ours, his tickets as good as ours. But uh, the thing that I have a little trouble with, and I think this, I mean, the thing is this, shows just how big this movie was and how well the marketing worked we went there and we wanted to get the uh the dune to sandworm popcorn buckets Mm -hmm. we were both went there with the intent of each buying a bucket i was going to buy it to you know we both eat the popcorn but i was going to leave the bucket in my office as as something to be in my background for virtual meetings you were going to gift a bucket to a friend who could not make it in, in yeah. her honor, we were gonna we were gonna bequeath her a sandworm bucket, and we went to the you know the Lincoln Square Theater in New York City, you know biggest IMAX, best IMAX in the country, huge theater. They were out of buckets mm-hmm. on by Saturday night. They were out of these buckets, and we've all seen the memes. We all saw the SNL sketch. Everyone knows the joke of what you do with this bucket. But Clayton, do you think they were sold out of this bucket? And I assume that also means there were sellouts of this bucket all over the country. Do you think they were sold out of this bucket because of people's uh, desire to honor Dune 2, to remember Dune 2? 
Or do you think people were using this bucket in other ways and this bucket has become a high selling, uh, you know, a boudoir item? Well, I mean, yeah, to, to speak to your first point, I think it, it, it's, it's good that this sold out because mm-hmm. and it makes sense because Lincoln Square was the number one theater for this movie in the entire country. Yeah. New York City. Right. Huge, I mean, who, uh, best movie going city. And they will be getting a B.O. Boys live show because of that. Yeah. Uh, and I think they were they should have ordered more. I mm-hmm. think they should have felt it in the atmosphere that this was a big deal. And I mean, it's not going to make people get a refund from their ticket. So, you know, that's not something that is going to hurt the box office of Dune 2, the fact that people can't buy these buckets. But yeah, I mean, I do think you're going to see knockoff, knockoff mm-hmm. popcorn buckets on some non respectable sites. I mean, I think you're going to see a few pop ups. Mm-hmm. You next next time you might be browsing, you know, uh, right. on the web, right? And and I think that's what's Dune two happen. buckets in your area. You yeah. know that'll yeah. be the thing. Do you want to do you want to see a Dune two bucket in your area? And who's not gonna click on that? You got to click. That's the thing. Yeah, you got to click. Yeah, I could see there being online shops that are selling. And God, God only knows what they'll put together. Take an old popcorn bucket. And, you know, put a pillowcase inside of it or, or something like that. Or, you know, uh, I, I think you're going to start seeing that the way you do outside of huge sporting events. When you get down a, the street from the stadium and there is a couple of guys selling knockoff T-shirts mm-hmm. that have like basically an iPhone photo of the of the player, you know, printed onto a shirt. I think you're going to see guys with blankets on the on the sidewalk selling what they say are Dune 2 popcorn buckets. And I think there's definitely going to be a moment, uh, you know, a TMZ's type moment where someone mm-hmm. runs up to Timothy Chalamet with a bootleg bucket. Yeah. And, and they're stuck and, in it. And they, well, they want a, they want a signature. Oh, okay. And he's like, that's not a real, that's not real. That's not the one. I'm not signing that. That's not a real bucket. That's a bootleg bucket. That's a pop-up yeah. bucket. I mean, I think you're going to start seeing videos of people getting their parts stuck in these knockoff Dune 2 popcorn buckets. I think that's going to happen. I think the I think the real ones, they've probably tested them. And, you know, unless you're an abnormal size, I think they've tested them so that they know people are not going to get stuck in them. But mm-hmm. I think when it comes to these knockoff Dune 2 popcorn buckets, they're not going to be safety tested. And I think you're going to start to see people getting their their parts stuck inside of those knockoff Dune 2 popcorn buckets. And it's going to get ugly out there. Yeah. I mean, but let's not focus on the negative here. Oh, no. That's and, just, and it, that's, that's not even negative. And that's not even negative because I think even that shows the popularity and the fact that this movie is a cultural touchstone. I think if we start to see TikToks of people getting their parts stuck in Dune 2 knockoff popcorn buckets... It just goes to show how big this movie is. So I think even that's good because mm-hmm. then the studio can't be sued for that. You know, no. if some guy in his garage is getting duct tape and, you know, KY and old popcorn buckets and and mixing them together and selling them and people got stuck in there, it, it just goes to show the demand for Dune 2. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about who went to see this movie yep. so uh first off 40 percent were plfs like people went inside in plfs so wow so that's that's huge huge um 18 to 34 is 55 percent 24 to 34 were the largest demo at 34 mm-hmm. percent and the overall uh overall over 35 crowd 41% of ticket buyers. So uh, I mean this is skewing a little bit older. Mhm. which is okay. Yeah. I-, I do think that young people will see this movie. Uh you know even though and I think it's good that this is skewing a little bit older because it's showing like these people will come out to a movie like this mm-hmm. if they think it's good. Mhm. Yeah. 
and, and I think that the star power here, the young stars, this is Zendaya. I mean, let's say Zendaya and Chalamet are going to get young people into this movie over the next few months. And mm -hmm. this is a big opening weekend. This is a real long game for Dune 2 because it is going to be the movie people are talking about. It's going to be the movie that people want to see multiple times. It's going to be the movie people want to see on PLFs. And you just look at the schedule. Yeah, there's big movies coming out the next month. There's Godzilla X Kong, the collab. There's Ghostbusters, Frozen City, Frozen Empire, Frozen Ghostbusters. There's Kung Fu Panda for the kids. There's big movies. But Dune 2 is going to be the big quality movie that is just, I mean, that movie is going to be in the top three for the next two months. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's that's just how it's going to be. And I think the young people will continue to come out because Zendaya is going to tell them to come out and they're going to want to see her. Yeah. And, and po according to Post Track, 47 percent said they'll watch Dune, Dune Part 2 in a theater again. Wow. More wow. than watching it at home. And, and that and that also this movie is not <laughs> there's so many reasons why this is so amazing. Mm -hmm. This movie is not easy to follow or comprehend in some spots. Okay. It, it's not, right? I mean, there are things about it that are curious. And if you haven't seen the first movie in a little while, you're, okay, wait, what is going on here? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But that does not at all impact the experience of this. Mm -hmm. And I do think that something I've been beating the drum for and I think it was a really smart move. And I never read the book. Huh? huh? I don't read sci-fi. I don't read fantasy. Okay. Huh? huh? But the romantic element here. That's the key. The Zendaya and mm -hmm. Timothy Chalamet romance in this movie is going to be a big draw. Once more people know about this, me even saying this is going to get people to buy tickets. Yep. That this is a real romance that pays off in a way right i mean this th it is a through line through this movie that you get a definitive like re resolution to not definitive but there is a resolution to it it's yeah, a yeah. main crux of this movie and i think that's really really important and i think that's done so artfully that mm -hmm. that's going to bring people back to the theaters Yes. That's something that's an element that I think the younger people are going to start seeing that that's part of this and really come out in droves for it. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's going to take a movie like this, I think, to help teach a certain generation, a younger generation, that you're actually allowed to have romance between huge stars that emotionally matters in a giant movie because you've had a decade plus of just completely romance-free, kiss-free, love-free superhero movies. Mm -hmm. You know, you had some bromances in there, I guess. You know, you had movies where, oh, that talking squirrel really loves the superhero guy and they love each other and they're bros and, and that was cool. But we have not had actual Titanic-style people are in love together mm -hmm. in a romantic way you know superhero movies they gave us some bromances they gave us you know some chaste glances between possible romantic partners but this is a movie that actually gives youngsters something to swoon over mm -hmm. and and that was been missing for a decade but now because youngsters want to swoon teenage boys teenage girls teenage people people they want to swoon mm -hmm. and Dune 2 lets them swoon again. Yeah. And I think that's going to, it's going to take a while for that to sort of sink in. I think there'll be some TikTok resistance to that because of what they were taught in superhero movies. But I do think that is going to be a big part of why this movie plays and plays for the next few months. And I think it's going to be great to sort of help adjust that superhero generation to what movies used to be and could be again. And when we look downstream at what's coming out with some of these young people, so Timothy is a star now. It's official. Yeah. He had yeah. Wonka. Wonka's huge. Wonka's coming to, uh, I think it's coming to Max the 8th, so yes. pretty soon. Yeah. So he's going to be at home and at the theater. 
And this opening has a lot to do with him. Now, obviously, when this movie ends its run in theaters, we are most definitely divvying up the millions. So we're not yeah. going to get into that here. Yeah. That's going to be epic. That's going to be one of our biggest ever. Yeah. But you've got him. Whatever he does next, he's he's set. Mm-hmm. Please now don't be an Apple show. 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 Now, you're looking at Zendaya. Mm-hmm. She has challengers. Oh, God. That's going to be huge. Because of this movie, there's a possibility that that is going to be huge. That mm-hmm. that could be a small movie about a love triangle between three tennis pros mm-hmm. could make for what it is, Bafa Bobo. It's yeah. possible because she has the following and she has the goods. We know yeah. that she's got what it takes to be magnetic on screen. Yeah. She's magnetic in this film. Mm-hmm. So you got her. Then you got bike riders that dropped a new trailer mm-hmm. that makes it look so much more awesome and more down the line for regular folks. Yeah. Folks in the stacks, the stacks mm-hmm. dwellers, the earth dogs. So I think that is also going to be big because of this movie. So that's the with sort Austin of, Butler with Austin Butler. Yeah. Right. So I think that is something to look forward to. Obviously Furiosa is going to be what it is because it is an IP. Yeah. But those movies have always been something outside. I mean, the fact that Mad Max Fury Road made what it did when it when it came out is still amazing. Mm-hmm. And that is one of those movies that I think is going to drive, you know, older folks to come to the movies. That's going to be a prestige movie. Yeah. Be- because that Mad Max Fury Road turned out to be a prestige movie. So that is a prestige movie. And that's probably going to be very big, too, just because of the IP, but also because of her, because right. of Anna Taylor-Joy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anya Taylor Joy. I said Anya Taylor Joy. Got to nip that in the bud before it starts. Before it becomes a Jenny Ortega situation. Yeah, Jenna. Yeah. Jenna. Jenna. You did it. The, yeah. No, see, I know. The... Well, I was I was defining what the situation okay. had been. Yeah. Um, the yeah, mispronouncing I mean, virus that we spread to each other. The the well, you cast of the cast of Dune Two has some big things coming up, and the one you feel bad for again, we've talked about it. Florence Pugh. She's coming off of Oppenheimer. Gonna win Best Picture, made a billion, you know, eight hundred million dollars worldwide, whatever it made. Dune two, gonna do the same. Huge, I mean, she, and she's looking at her co-stars. That Zendaya's got challengers coming up, and Austin Butler's got the bike riders, and Anya Taylor Joy is Furiosa, and then poor Florence Pugh is somehow still stuck in the Marvel movies, it, oh. it, and she's got not just a Marvel movie. It's not like she's playing. Black Widow, or or you know, she's playing, uh, I don't know, Supergirl. I don't know who, who whatever character, big marquee character. She's playing someone in the Thunderbolts. Mm-hmm. That's her next movie. I mean, Florence Pugh still being in the MCU, it feels like someone who was is, is like trapped in the past. You know that she got sucked into a time portal and she woke up and she looked down and I, I mean, it feels like she's in that. Don't worry, darling. Movie that she was in a few years ago, mm-hmm. but in real life, where she looks oh. and she's like trapped in the past, and there's some incel who is controlling her from a different dimension. You know, yeah. like she's in a real life version of that. I, you know, that movie. I and, did, and I did that love incel it. have the initials KF. KF. Yeah, yeah. There could be a Feige operating her her Matrix machine. I mean. I I didn't like that movie. That movie was famously a big bomb, but I would almost say listeners go watch. Don't worry, darling now, because that feels so instructive as to what Florence Pugh is going through in real life, being stuck, making thunderbolts at this point in her life. It does feel like there is a real life incel controlling her from the beyond, forcing her to act out some twisted fantasy in, in the past mm-hmm. i mean that is what her being in thunderbolts is so hopefully she recovers from that hopefully she escapes i know she's trying to escape obviously she talked about how she hoped this movie thunderbolts wasn't going to happen so maybe she escapes but 
But, yeah, the but, young uh, cast of Dune 2 has so much to look forward to right now. Yeah, and I would say positively on that front is that she has set the SOS. It's yes. not like she she's knows. acting as if everything's fine. She, mm-hmm. we, that makes me like her. I mean, yeah. I always liked her. Yeah. But it makes me like her more that she understands her situation and is at, and is and is asking for help in the way she can. She can't come out and blast the way that Janine Garofalo did famously on SNL mm-hmm. in that mid '90s season, the Bad yeah. Boys. Th- you know, Apex famous New York magazine cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Florence Pugh cannot do that, and mm-hmm. we know this. So that is why these calls for help, the way she's doing them ingratiate her to us and i think the film going public they'll know that she's not into it the same way she don't worry darling she did the same thing with that press tour right right famously walk the red carpet drinking a martini or or whatever it was um very quickly we haven't done this in a while i'd like to do a a quick promotional partner spotlight for it's gotta be quick it's gotta be quick it's gotta be quick we have an out it'll be quicker if you let me say it because we gotta say it uh dune 2 they did a partnership with xbox there was a microsoft flight simulator dune expansion pack i mean that's huge clay you gotta you gotta we gotta recognize that Microsoft had a flight simulator expansion pack for Dune 2. There was also a Govi collaboration with their TV backlights. Uh, so it gives you an immersive viewing experience and Dune's logo is on that. That's huge. Uh, there was a partnership with Hamilton Watches. They had two limited edition Dune 2 watches. So people are, you know, hey, what time is it? They check their their limited edition watch, and there's a Dune logo on there, so that's going to get more people to to go see this movie. Samsung, all right, they brought the trailer to their Neo Q LED 8K screen in 65,000 retail stores. So that partnership, a lot of eyeballs on Dune two there, and I mean, let's not forget Smart Water. Okay, Smart Water was a partner here. They were all over the New York premiere, paid social posts. So Smart Water is involved. I think that's Jennifer Aniston. So in some way, she's getting her beak wet with the Smart Water and Dune 2. So big promotional partnerships all over. And you got to love to see that. You love to see it. Yeah. I mean, those uh, I, none of those seem super marquee, though. I, I think this movie... Smart Water's big. Yeah, this movie did such especially, a good... Especially now, water is becoming more and more scarce. So if you could partner with Smart Water, then I, I think that's also uh, going to be more and more important as we move on through whatever global climate crisis is we're in, is you want to be the movie that's partnering with Smart Water. Oh, yeah, because you just get paid in water. Yes, yeah. Oh, the filmmakers and the the actors should just be like, give me water. Give me smart waters. Yeah. And hoard that. Yeah. Yeah. So but I, I, I will say, you know, f- we have bashed marketing campaigns before here on this show. Mm-hmm. Most famously, anyone but you, mm-hmm. which I think is still uh, terrible and needs to be remembered that it was terrible. Madam the marketing Webb. campaign. Yeah. 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 Madam Webb's marketing campaign was terrible and obviously nothing was going to save that movie, but it was, it was, it was terrible. Marketing campaign here. Really good. Mm -hmm. The awareness Mm -hmm. for this was huge. Yeah. You had your stars going on the shows, you know, you had Austin Butler, you had Timothy Chalamet. They were buttering and, and, and jamming Mm -hmm. each other's scones on lad Bible. Mm -hmm. I mean, that sort of thing drives engagement mm-hmm. and they were everywhere. They were quizzing each other on Vanity Fair, I, th- mm-hmm. I believe. Yeah. I mean, at this point, the magazine doesn't matter. What matters is the video. Yeah. But uh, that sort of I mean, those sort of things do what they're going to do. And also their social medias. I mean, the, the, the actor social medias, they were very active on social media pushing mm-hmm. this movie. And you know why? Because it's a quality f- picture that they yeah. were proud of. That's the other thing. You want to make movies that the actors are proud to be in. Yep. That is such a thing that gets lost is that 
when we sat and watched the trailer for Godzilla collab Kong, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get into it because we will talk about it when this movie comes out. But that is the sort of film that a Brian Tyree Henry is going to promote, but he ain't going to be happy about it. No. He's probably happy about the paycheck for sure. Of course. Yeah. But there's no artistic fulfillment there. Right. He's seeing Austin Butler and he's seeing Florence Pugh and he's seeing all of these people that are his peers in the industry promoting a piece of art and he's promoting a video game cut sequence. And it is terrible for him. And that is going to affect the marketing of that movie because I'm sure he's not proud of it. We'll see as we get closer to Godzilla, X-Kong, the collab. You you, you really left that trailer with a bad taste in your mouth. I mean, I will say Kong was Pat. wearing a new power glove. Godzilla had a big bracelet on. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get closer because I, that is going to be a big movie. Uh, but, but you're right. It's not going to be an Oscar movie the way, you know, we'll get into this, I think, on a future episode. Hopefully. Dune 2, and I was looking ahead after we talked about this, I was looking ahead this weekend at what is on schedule for this year in terms of possible Oscar movies. And of course in the fall, there's going to be smaller movies that drop or that, you know, we don't think of now that are going to end up being your big Oscar movies for the year. But honestly, just in terms of the slam doinks, like big studio movies that seem like Oscar movies, it is thin soup right now on this schedule. I mean, I would say thinner soup in some ways than the 2020, 2021 years in terms of movies that seem like Oscar movies. Mm -hmm. Dune 2 is set up really well right now to be possibly the Oppenheimer of next year. Um, And I think that talk is going to start now and going to be another big part of why the legs on this movie are so big, because it's almost like, hey, go see the best, what's going to win best picture now. Mm -hmm. because ain't nothing else coming down the line that's a dune 2 type oscar movie i don't think yeah um but that i think that'll be a big a big part of it for sure and And, and, and so yeah you're going to want to promote that movie more than you're going to want to promote godzilla x kong a godzilla's got a power glove and and, uh before we go and we're not going to do an after bo because we both have hard outs hard outs yeah but this weekend, I think, will historically, and we'll document it at some point in our book, be a huge weekend for the the uh, reascension of stars in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Because this movie opened Dune 2 with all these young stars, and again, older stars, Javier Bardem, so amazing in this movie. Yeah. And this uh, made 81.5, maybe more. Then you had Sidney Sweeney, emerging mm. star, hosting SNL and yep. doing it the way you should. Now, we loved Io's hosting, but she is a comedy actor who has had so much experience doing live comedy. Mm-hmm. Sydney Sweeney does not have any experience that I know of of doing live comedy. She didn't do level four at UCB, you're saying. You don't yes. think that happened. Yeah. She probably did not. Threw herself into this SNL went along for the ride Mm -hmm. and really, I think did a really good job of what she was given because she gave herself over to it, which is something that you want the star to do. You don't want the star or the uh, podcaster uh, or the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, standup acting as if I'm too cool for this. Right. Okay. You want the person like Chalamet when he hosts, Mm-hmm. Get goofy, throw yourself, try to do an accent, even if you can't. That's the fun of SNL, and that's the fun of that episode. Now, is it a great episode? No. But no. no. That it's... really that really showed what mm-hmm. she has, which is likability, immense likability, which I yes. don't think she showed in her hot ones. I was harsh on her hot ones. I don't think that was a great breakout for her, but I think this SNL hosting was great. And also, we had Glenn Powell show up. And he got a big, big reaction from the crowd. Yep, yep. This was not one of those cameos where people didn't really know who. They knew who he was. They were out of their minds to see him. No, she did great. Yeah, mediocre episode. This is Listen, this is not Jason Priestley 
and Teenage Fan Club. This is no. not an all-timer SNL. Greatest, greatest episode ever. Greatest episode ever. Let's be honest. If you haven't seen it, look it up. Watch it from beginning to end. Greatest SNL episode ever. This was not that. But yeah, she showed the star power, showed the wattage, showed the likability, showed a lot. Sydney Sweeney showed a lot from beginning to end. I mean, mm-hmm. stick to the end. Watch the goodbyes. She shows star power in that as well. So uh, it's a good good weekend for young stars. Hollywood. It's a great this. weekend for young Pat. Yeah, it's a great weekend for young. Great stars. weekend for young stars. Hollywood needed this, and uh, I think Dune Two is just going to keep making bigger and bigger stars for these the next couple of months. It's it's going to really cement them. So yeah, like we said, we'll talk about all these other movies in a future date. You know, we'll we'll find time to talk about shows in season four, episode seven to eight. Will at we at some point down the road? I think we will. I you know, I, I think at some point we've really got to maybe divvy things up for the chosen something like you know we've got to give the chosen their due but it's not the episode well we, we have to watch every all. episode and give a million the millions for each episode what each episode deserves yeah oh my yeah listen i if if only these weren't fathom event onlys and we were able to use our amca list i would go see some chosen episodes in a theater um but it's a tougher sale when we've got to shell out like 20 dollars each to watch these yeah um, but hey, people are out there are doing that every week. So good on them. Um, Clayton, the listeners should email us, the BO Boys Podcast at gmail.com. Give us your comments, your questions, your predictions, your boots on the ground reporting. And again, give us your pitch for getting us and the BO Boys live tour to come to your city. So get your bids together, get your mayor, get your governor. Put a bid together to get the B.O. Boys to come to your city. We're coming to L.A. uh, in October, Tuesday, October 8th. And we're looking for dates in New York and Boston and possibly your city. Email us, the B.O. Boys podcast at gmail.com. Follow us on social media at the B.O. Boys pod on TikTok and Twitter X. Want to be O senior intern Christopher killing it with the clips, of course. Want to be O junior intern Jack has brought back the Substack writing up a storm if you haven't already you got to subscribe he's got his article up breaking down this historic dune 2 box office weekend so go to the sub stack jack is back um five stars on apple podcasts of course watch us on youtube we are youtubers and if you want to see the shades you got to go to the bo boys youtube network subscribe there watch the videos we'll have web exclusives all that stuff on the bo boys youtube channel and yeah, get get your plane tickets ready because we're going on tour. And Clayton, I think that's it. I think we've said it all. I don't think there's anything left to be said. No. Except for until next time. We'll smell you at the box, box office. office. Nailed it. Nailed it.